Hello and welcome to Mouse in the Mitten Trivia Pod, a podcast where you can test your Disney trivia knowledge over a variety of topics. My name is Court and I will be your host. Our game will consist of five rounds of six questions covering everything from your basic Disney knowledge to some unknown facts. Each question is worth one point unless otherwise noted. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Mouse in the Mitten. And make sure if you're watching us over on YouTube that you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that bell for notifications. And hey, there is a lot of different things that go into planning the perfect Disney vacation, and sometimes it can seem a little bit daunting. If you're someone who's trying to navigate those waters and need a little bit of help, I would love to help you figure out everything and get make sure... You're the most magical vacation that you possibly can have. All you got to do is email me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. We can get you all set and all taken care of. Well, today we have a really unique game, a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. So hopefully you're excited about it as well. And we're going to start round one with a classic Disney Channel original show kind of stemming from what we talked about a few weeks ago about did it get a Disney Channel original movie. Today we're going to talk about Kim Possible. So all these questions have to do with Kim Possible, one of my all-time favorite Disney Channel shows. It was peak Disney Channel for me. So let's get into these questions about Kim Possible with question number one. What even Stevens actor played the lead role of Kim Possible? Question number two. What Boy Meets World brother played Ron Stoppable? Question number three. There are two main villains that Kim Possible faces throughout the show. Name either of the two main villains. Question number four. Raven Simone plays the voice of Kim Possible's best friend. What is her name? Question number five. Call Me, Beat Me is the well-known theme song for Kim Possible. Who sang the theme song? And question number six. What Disney park had an attraction in which guests could get a modified cell phone and go around a park to gather clues to prevent evildoers from global domination? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. All right, let's get you some answers here on Kim Possible. So question number one. What even Stevens actor played the lead role of Kim Possible? Well, that would be Christy Carlson Romano. Now, at the time, she was a rising star. She was on Even Stevens as well as Kim Possible. Since the these shows have come to an end, she has started a podcast more recently and has talked about some of the ongoings that were happening at Disney. We all saw the Nickelodeon special that came out uh, about a year ago. <clears throat> Similar things sounded like it was happening be behind the scenes in Disney, probably not to the extent that they were at Nickelodeon, but it sounds like it wasn't always sunshine and rainbows at Disney as well. And Christy Carlson Romano talks about that a little bit on her podcast. Question number two, what boy meets world brother plays Ron Stoppable? Well, that would be Will Friedle. He does a great job. He is an awesome actor. Um, just always fun. He did a great job as Eric on Boy Meets World. And then of course, as Ron Stoppable as well with his pet mole, naked mole rat, Rufus, always a cool combination. I remember writing a paper on naked mole rats, specifically from Kim Possible and Rufus. Question number three. There are two main villains that Kim Possible faces throughout the show. Name either of the two main villains. Well, in order to get the point there, would it have to say Dr. Draken or Shigo? Shigo's kind of gotten another life here, especially this time of year when we talk about the villains that are oogie boogie or at not so scary. Seems like she like, some comes up every once in a while. There's a lot of people that cosplay as her. I always thought that she looked just like Kim Possible. Just green and black, a little bit of a different way. But it seems like it was her evil twin, if you will. Question number four. Raven Simone plays the voice of Kim Possible's best friend. 
What is her name? Well, Kim Possible's best friend was Monique. They were both cheerleaders together. They went to high school together, all that sort of stuff. And I believe she also helped a little bit in some of the things that Kim Possible was going through and, and fighting bad guys. Question number five. Call Me, Beat Me is the well-known theme song for Kim Possible. Who sang the theme song? Well, that was Christina Milian. Now, kind of an up-and-coming name back in the day that this show was prominent. She also had a song for the Spider-Man movie that came out around that time. She was kind of a one-hit wonder, but she had some. She has a great voice, just couldn't really get anything to stick beyond a couple of small songs here and there. Last but not least, question number six. What Disney park had an attraction in which guests could get a modified cell phone and go around the park to gather clues to prevent evildoers from global domination? If I had said go around the world to gather clues from global domination, maybe that one would have given it away because it was Epcot. I never got to do this, but it looked pretty cool. You got a modified cell phone, you get the dit 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 and you'd kind of find these modified clues. We see similar things in the parks now in which you have to find clues. You go from here to there, you get different stickers we see that in animal kingdom with wilderness with the um, wilderness lodge stuff we see that with um the pirates thing that you can do um, around the different as well as different resorts so there's always going to be something that's similar to this i just think the modified cell phones maybe brought it a little bit too high tech but now it's just stickers so we still see some of these attractions here and there as well but again great show if you haven't watched it in a minute it's on disney plus i think that's gonna be my next show i'm gonna watch here just to kind of relive the magic of my middle school years continuing on now into round number two round number two is our fast facts this round has simple questions and simple answers today's category is nighttime spectaculars for this round what's going to happen is i'm going to name a nighttime spectacular you just have to let me know what park would you find that nighttime spectacular in something that's always fun for me is the nighttime spectaculars and the shows that go along with it so let's get going with question number one world of color Question number two, happily ever after. Question number three, luminous, the symphony of us. Question number four, illuminous. Question number five, illuminate, a nighttime celebration. And question number six, sky full of colors. So again, nighttime spectaculars, always a lot of fun, always where a lot of memories are made and definitely the most crowded part of your entire day. So let's get started with question number one. World of Color, well that is in California Adventures. It's really cool, I've seen some behind the scenes stuff on how they do it. It's really cool the way they operate those beams of light and the water and everything else like that. So it'd be really cool to be able to check out. It's on my list of things to do. Question number two. Happily Ever After, well, that is, of course, Magic Kingdom in Disney World. One of my all-time favorite nighttime spectaculars. Just so many memories and always a tear in my eye at least one time during the show. It's the tangled part. Question number three. Luminous, the Symphony of Us, well, that is Epcot in Disney World. Now, they've kind of gone through a couple of transitions for the nighttime spectacular at Epcot. This is the current one, and it is pretty cool as well. Question number four, Illuminous. That is Disneyland Paris. Now, this looks like a really, really cool show. Definitely one of the shows that I wanna check out. I um, highly recommend checking it out on YouTube. It's a really cool show. For the 30th anniversary, they did a little drone show with a different show in Paris as well. It looks really cool and definitely something that, I, I know they don't have the drones anymore, but it'd be something that'd be really cool to check out. Question number five. Illuminate, a nighttime celebration. Well, that is Shanghai Disneyland. Again, something that's really, really cool. They have a big castle there. So be able to check that one out. Definitely be cool to see all the different projections as well as the fireworks show that came with it. It's a really cool show. Last but not least, question number six. Sky full of colors. Well, that is Tokyo Disneyland. Definitely, again, a really cool one that I would love to see. It, and those parks are so close, you can kind of see it from Disney Sea, but definitely a show that I would love to check out. But again, 
I've never seen a bad nighttime spectacular from Disney, but it's definitely a cool way and a good memory maker as well. Round number three is our connections that make contact. So for this round, the way that this is going to work is I'm going to ask you five questions that may or may not be Disney related, but the answers do relate somehow through Disney. And that's going to be your sixth question of this round is what is that connection? So let's get started here with question number one. What movie explores the possibility of a human being controlled by a small animal? Question number two. In what movie can you find Wandering Oaken's trading post and sauna? Question number three. Founded on November 11th, 1911, what car company took over General Motors in 1918 and has headquarters in Detroit, Michigan? Question number four. What movie has characters named Drax, Nebula, Barit, and Horuz? Question number five. Finish this quote. Until we learn to manage and maintain a sustainable living relationship with the earth, then, and only then, will we be truly. And question number six is what is the connection between those answers? I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. if we can connect those circles so question number one what movie explores the possibility of a human being controlled by a small animal well that is ratatouille i wanted to say a human being controlled by a mouse to help him cook but i thought that'd be a little bit too obvious so i tried to leave it a little bit vague to try to increase the difficulty a little bit question number two in what movie can you find wandering oaken's trading post and sauna well that is Frozen, and yes, I am wearing my Wandering Oaken shirt today. It's a very comfy shirt, it's very nice. I did get a compliment from both Anna and Elsa for wearing it in the parks, plus it matches my lion's hat. So, you know, it goes hand in hand. Question number three. Founded on November 11, 1911, what car company took over General Motors in 1918 and has headquarters in Detroit, Michigan? Well, that one is Chevrolet. My guess is that you had a 50-50 shot. You either said Chevrolet or you said Ford. The biggest difference between the two is that Ford and GM don't exist together. Chevy and GM do. It's a constant battle here in the state of which is better, Ford or GM. At the end of the day, they're good cars and you get respect around here for driving one of those. <laughs> Question number four. What movie has characters named Drax, Nebula, Barit, and Haruz? Well, that is Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, Barit and Haruz maybe didn't get you there. Drax definitely did. Uh, maybe Nebula did as well. But those last two, just part of the cast and crew there for sure. <laughs> last but not least, question number five. Finish this quote. Until we learn to manage and maintain a sustainable living relationship with the earth, then and only then will we be truly living with the land. Yeah, that is the quote. And ever, I mean, if it's, it's an all time favorite ride, of course, it's going to be great. And this quote is ingrained in my mind as just one of the most relaxing rides in all of Disney. Speaking of which question number six is what is the connection? So we had answers such as, Ratatouille, Frozen, Chevrolet, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Living with the Land. The connection there, those are all rides that you can find in Epcot down in Disney World. We have Ratatouille's Adventure, fun ride. My daughter loved it last time we were there. Frozen, Ever After, great ride again. My daughter loved it, but she's also a huge 
um, Frozen fan, so it makes sense. You had Chevrolet that is Test Track. Technically, Chevrolet is the sponsor of Test Track. And the rumor is apparently the top speed on Test Track is set that way because of the laws that are in Florida. I have no confirmation of it. That's just a rumor. Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, the greatest ride that there is down there right now. And then Living with the Land, the most relaxing ride other than the People Mover down in Disney World. A great way to just kind of relax, see some vegetation, stay in the boats. Please don't, don't, don't be bad. Stay in the boat. But yeah, these are all great rides and different parts of Epcot. One of the most fun parks down there. Again, if you're trying to navigate those waters, feel free to reach out to me. Be, be able to take care of you. Make sure you get every ounce of magic out of Epcot. You can. Continuing on now into round number four. Round number four is typically reserved for movie anniversaries. Unfortunately, there were not really any great movie anniversaries this week. So instead, we're going to honor the anniversary of another park opening. And this time, we're going to talk about Hong Kong Disneyland, one of the coolest parks that are out there, one of the most unique ones as well. So let's get started with question number one. Within two, what year did Hong Kong Disneyland open? Question number two. How many Disney theme parks are there in China? Question number three. What world was set to open in 2020, but instead opened in November 2023? Question number four. As part of the massive expansion across all Disney parks, what area is supposed to open at some point in Hong Kong Disneyland? Question number five. What bay did Disney fill in to make Hong Kong Disneyland? And question number six. What Hong Kong based group filmed the video for their song Boss in 2021 inside the park? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music and then I will return to give you all the answers on Hong Kong Disneyland. here on Hong Kong Disneyland with question number one. Within two, what year did Hong Kong Disneyland open? Well, it opened on September 12th, 2005. So in order to get the point there, we would have had to say between 2003 and 2007. Again, this was part of a huge expansion in the Disney parks where they were adding new parks in various places around the world. This was just another inclusion and another part of that puzzle. Question number two. How many Disney theme parks are there in China? Well, there are two. Obviously, we're talking about Hong Kong. The other one we talked about a little bit earlier in Shanghai. That is another great park in China. Question number three. What world was set to open in 2020, but instead opened in November 2023? Well, that is the world of Frozen. Now, we talked about it with Disney Sea a little bit last week. This was a much bigger and much more pinpointed land that they opened in hong kong and we watched the documentary on it my wife speaks chinese she, it was just cool to see her and she could read some of the things that were on there and she could understand what they were saying it was really really cool um how they all put it together as well question number four as part of the massive expansion across all the Disney parks, what area is supposed to open at some point in Hong Kong Disneyland? Well, that is Stark Expo. It's part of the huge, massive Marvel undertaking, and they've they've said dates they're going to start working on it, and then they pulled it back. They've said some new dates, and then they pulled it back. Stark Expo is going into Hong Kong. It's just a matter of when and when they're going to start move, making all those moves to make it a reality. Question number five. What bay did Disney fill in to make Hong Kong Disneyland? Well, they filled in Penny's Bay. Now, the way the story goes, and um, I've seen this story said about two, three different times from two, three different sources. They were in a helicopter trying to find land to build Hong Kong Disneyland. And the person they were in the helicopter with said, well, what about right here? And pointed straight down. And they were over Penny's Bay. 
And they're like, this is all water. They're like, we could fill it in. So they're like, we've done this a little bit in Florida. Might as well give it a try in Hong Kong. And so far, so good. Last but not least, question number six. What Hong Kong-based group filmed the video for their song Boss in 2021 inside the park? Well, that group was Mirror. Now, I have not heard of this group. I personally, I am not a big K-pop fan. Apparently, J-pop is really, really huge right now as well. Um, but this is not a group that I've heard of. But apparently, in 2021, for their song Boss, they filmed the music video in there. I've never seen it, but I'm sure it's probably really cool because it's a Disney park, so it's got to be really cool. But again, this is definitely on my bucket list of places and things I want to do in Disney. Hong Kong would just be a cool place to visit in general as well, so hopefully you get out there someday as well. Wrapping up today's game, round number five is titled, Who Is That? For this round, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you the name of a random character from a Disney movie. You just have to tell me what movie is that from. Now, sometimes this character has a line. Sometimes they don't, but you've had you have seen this character in these Disney movies. And it'll this round, I'm hoping it'll probably make you go, oh, that's the name of that person. You know, try to expand on it a little bit. So let's get started with question number one. Princess Federica Jane de la Fontaine. Question number two. Percy. Question number three. Rudy. Question number four. Shorty. Question number five. Lasalo. And question number six, Van. All right, I'm gonna give you a few seconds worth of music. See if you can comb through your catacombs of Disney characters. Let me know where they're all from. It should be known that these are all humans. And again, some of them have lines, some of them don't. But I'll give you a few seconds worth of music. Try to come up with those answers and then I will return. Let's see if we can name these peculiar characters with question number one. Princess Federica Janine de la Fontaine. She is from Cinderella. Now you're like, who is that? She was one of the princesses that were walking down the aisle and was being announced. And they were going through name. They announced two that were not associated with the story. She was one of them. Question number two. Percy, he is from frozen there is just after they go through the beginning of the story and anna and elsa's parents pass away they do the whole three years later you know the doors are opening up da, 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 da. there's we don't know if they're a husband wife couple brother sister whatever but the um guy's like adjusting his hat and she's like come on percy we're gonna be late that's where it comes from is frozen question number three rudy well, he is from the Emperor's New Groove. And you're like, who's Rudy? He's the old guy with the cane. And like he says he's a fighter and he gets thrown out. Um, and he says, don't throw off his groove. His name is Rudy. Question number four. Shorty. Well, he is from Tangled. He is Cupid. He's the one that has the diaper. He's um, flying around. Everything else like that. Uh, he's the one who asks, what's the password? That's Shorty. Question number five. Lasalo. Well, that is Moana. Lasalo does have a couple of lines here. He's the one who says that the nets are coming up without fish. That's the one that Moana and her dad are talking to in that. That's that's who that is. Last but not least, question number six. Van. He is from cars. He has the GPS. Doesn't need to ask for directions ever again. He has the GPS. So at least that's the excuse that he has. Uh, definitely a funny part. And definitely stay for the end credits. He He's 
you know, they're lost, but you know, he still, he has the GPS. He, he knows where he's going. So again, there's a ton of these little nuanced characters throughout all of Disney. It's amazing to me that even some of these on like Disney wiki don't even have their own pages. It's kind of funny how there are some really niche characters in Disney lore. So could we see this round again in this category again? Oh, for sure. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I will return next Thursday with more questions and more fun. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Mouse in the Mitten. Starting to upload some videos every single day during the week on TikTok. Make sure you, if you're watching us over on YouTube, that you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up and turn on that bell for notifications. If you're listening to us, please make sure you follow us on Apple Podcasts. If Apple isn't your thing, make sure you download us everywhere else. Leave us a five-star review wherever you can as well. And as mentioned, planning a Disney trip has a lot of twists, turns, and a lot of details. If you need a little bit of help with that, do not hesitate to reach out to me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. We'll get you all set up and all taken care of. Well, hey, my name's Court. The dog's name is Milo. I appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you next time.